Let alpha and beta, those are Greek letters, alpha and beta. Let alpha and beta be the roots of the quadratic equation, x squared plus x minus y equals zero. Find the value of alpha to the power of six plus beta to the power of six. Hmm, what are you gonna do with that? So, when we had a look at this idea uh, over here, we introduced these, we introduced these quadratics and we said, okay, you can find where these roots are, right? Well, they're talking about this quadratic equation here and they're just giving the roots some names, okay? How are we going to work out what this thing is? Why do they even have the power of six here? I'm going to ask you to make a little subheading. Now this is an idea, again, you're actually going to encounter next year. So this is kind of a nice little warm up to that. I want you to consider a quadratic equation, any quadratic equation. So what's the general form of a quadratic equation? Starts with an A. A, x squared plus bx plus c. Okay. There's the general form of a quadratic equation. That could be anything. Okay, yeah, that, that anything, right? Okay. So you'll notice that the right hand side I've set it to zero as opposed to y or something like that. Okay. If the right hand side is zero, what will this help me to find? Why would you make this equal to zero? What does that achieve? It gives you the x intercept. It gives you the roots the places where your parabola intersects with the x-axis, okay? So, consider this. Now, I don't know what the roots of this thing are, okay? I don't know where they are because ax squared plus bxc could be anything, right? But what I do know is that I can find the roots if I can put it into a factorized form, right? If I can see some structure underneath there, then I can work out, oh, it's negative two, negative three, or positive three, negative two, or whatever it is, okay? So I can write this, this can be rewritten, if it's in factorized form with the roots, right? Then it's gonna look something like x minus a number and x minus some other number. And those other numbers will be the roots. Now, this chapter three problem has opened up and has just given the roots names. It's called them alpha and beta. So I'm going to rewrite this like so. So in other words, I've got some quadratic equation and I know I should be able to rewrite it such that it's factorized in a form and I can work out what these are. And these might be messy, they might be nice numbers or they might be surds or something like that. That's all fine, okay? And there's one little problem that I want to adjust, which is that this guy up here, because it could be any quadratic we like, it could be non-monic, right? A could be equal to not just one, but two or three or four or five or any number you like. But this guy is monic, right? Do you notice that? If you were to expand it all out, then the coefficient of x squared would be exactly one, okay? So to fix that up and make sure that these things really are equivalent, I'm gonna put an a at the front, okay? Because once I multiply through, the coefficient of x squared will be a. So far, so good? Okay, now here we're going to play this mathematical trick, which is so important, and you've been doing it for a long time, maybe without even noticing it. When you have a look at one object from different points of view, from a different perspective. You see different things, but because it's the same object, you can draw different conclusions on it, right? So I want to think about each of these things together, but approach it from these two angles, okay? So the first angle is this second one we've written here, okay? If I look at this guy and I say, all right, I want to simplify this out. I notice that even though the A is there to make it the same as this, right? This is the same object. If I now want to go ahead and actually solve or factorize or whatever, uh, expand rather, the A doesn't matter. Do you see that? I could divide both sides by A and it would have the same solutions. Do you agree? So as a simple example, over here, right, this parabola here has roots negative two and negative three, yes? If I were to slap a five out the front, what would that do to the roots? How would the roots change? It's up, they would not change. How would the problem change? How would it be different? If I put a five at the front, or like a negative one out the front. Change the steepness. Yeah, it's just gonna be a steepness. Remember I said five before? If there was a five here and you expand it all out, this would no longer be six, it would be 30. 
right? So this guy up here is going to be all the way stretched up here. So it would be five times taller, as it were. If I've got a minus sign as I do right now, when I expand out, this will not be a six, it will be a negative six. So instead of being here, it's going to flip upside down, okay? And you've seen that kind of thing before. So over here, these two things have the same solution. That could be five or 100 or minus one, doesn't matter. Let's expand this now, okay? We spent a lot of time on factorizing last week. Let's expand this. Humor me, it's not hard. Tell me what I get. What's the first term? X squared. You're gonna do that thing with your fingers that you were showing me last time, right? Yeah. Uh, so that means your next term will be? Minus beta, beta, doesn't really matter, yeah, x. Then I have to move on to the next pair, right? So tell me what to write next. And? Are you happy with that? Is that okay? Now, have a look at this, and then have a look at this. These things are quite close to each other. Do you notice? I just need to rearrange this, rejig both of these a little bit, and then structure will be revealed, okay? So what I'm gonna first do here is, I notice there's some x squareds, and there's some x's, and then there's a constant term at the end, right? Alpha and beta are just numbers. They're just numbers. I should actually say where alpha and beta are the roots. I can factorize this a little further, right? I can say x squared minus, if I factorize it like this, get all the x terms out of the way, what will be in these brackets? How many x's am I taking away? Well, you take away alpha of them here, and then you take away beta of them here. Is that okay? Do you agree with my factorization? I pulled out a negative, and I pulled out the x as well. This alpha beta is just hanging out on its own because he's just a number. Okay. Now compare this with this. I have to do one more thing to this to make it look like this. Namely, remember when I went from line one to line two and I said, let's make it monic just to make it simpler. The answer is still the same. I can do the same to this, right? If I divide everything through by A, just like I did here, can you tell me what to write for each individual term? What does this become? It's just x squared. What does this become? It's just b divided by a, right? Like you don't know anything about these numbers, so you can't simplify or anything like that. And then of course there's an x. And then what does that last term on the left-hand side become? Just c on a. Thankfully that zero just stays zero. Okay. Now, look carefully. Look really carefully. Look at this line and then compare it with this last line I have over here. Do you see these are the same objects I've looked at from different points of view? What I can do is I can compare, there's x squared out the front, then there's x's, and then there's a constant term, but they look different, they look different, right? So I'm gonna say by comparing coefficients, That's the name of all the numbers that aren't x's or anything like that. I can see how many x's are there up here. Just x's. There's b on a, right? b on a. How many x's are there over here? There's minus alpha plus beta of them. Do you agree? Okay. What about this guy, c on a? That's the constant term. How many constant terms, or what constant term do I have over here? It's alpha times beta. Do you see it there? See it there? They're the same object. Okay. So now, if I just rejig this a tiny little bit, I'm going to multiply both sides here by negative 1, and I'm going to change everything to the other side. I want you to look, and I'll put a big box around this if you've got another color. I want you to look at what we've just written. Okay. What are alpha and beta again? They're the roots of this quadratic. What this is saying is, if you add up the roots, you'll get this number, whatever that happens to be. And if you multiply the roots, you'll get this number, whatever it happens to be. Let's test that out. Have a look. 
You did this one at the start, right? You know what the roots are. You know what alpha is and you know what beta is. By the way, it doesn't matter which one's which. The order's not important. What is alpha plus beta? Have a look. Alpha plus beta. It's uh, negative 2 plus negative 3, right? Which is negative 5. Good morning. Nice you join us. Minus 5. Do you see where minus 5 comes from? Have a look at A and B. What are they in the very, very first equation? What's A? A is just 1. And B is 5. Negative 5 over 1, which is negative 5. Does that make sense? What about alpha times beta, the product of the roots? What's the product of the roots for the first question? It's 6, which sure enough is this number over here. Okay. Does this make sense? Okay. So what's really, really interesting about this is you can work out what these are without knowing what the roots are equivalent to. Right? Like you can go straight there. I can read off the sum of the roots from this. I can just say it's negative 5 on 1. And I can read the product of the roots just by looking at this number, right? You don't even have to have worked out what the product of the roots, what the roots were. You can work out what their product is immediately, okay? Now this gets really, really funky and strange when you have a look at this. What were the roots on that thing again? The roots are meant to be here. The roots aren't there, right? There aren't any roots, except according to this work that we've just done here with a bit of fancy factorization, we can work out what the sum of roots should be equal to. Sum of roots should be minus b on a. What's minus b on a in this case? Have a look. Minus b on a. Right? Let's write the a there just to make it a little clearer. So minus b on a will just be negative 2. Hmm. The product of roots I can work out in the same way. Again, without knowing what the roots are. It's just going to be this guy over here, c on a, which in this case is just 4. Now this is perplexing to me because we all said that these things don't exist. They're not on there. You can't see any roots. But apparently you can add them up. And apparently you can multiply them, which is one of the clues that mathematicians use to be able to say, actually, there are roots here, you just can't see them on the board. You need something with a few more dimensions on it. Okay.